the Anthropocene Museum. Black and white images of Kenyan women in headbands and necklaces overlap with architectural designs. Magazine articles flash by with titles such as Not Another Museum, addressing colonial narratives in museums, Kenya's heritage falling apart as museums cry out for urgent aid, and Making Museums Moral Again. The Anthropocene Museum. Clouds blanket a city at dusk. In the morning, apartment buildings rise out of a gray city. A modern building resembling stacked glass prisms stands before a conventional half-built high-rise. Vans, buses, and trucks crawl down a city street past large palm trees and office buildings while women and men navigate busy sidewalks. Yara. Hazy sunlight shines across a valley of trees. The shadow of a mountain ridge slowly creeps on the side of a valley. A figure walks across a grassy plateau and peers into the valley. Jagged rocks line the entrance to a dark cave. A middle-aged woman approaches, as do a boy and a young woman. They look up and stare at the sky. Lava-like liquid is poured from a smoking bowl. The boy and young woman use walking sticks as they enter the vast cave. Desiccated bones sit in a pile. The young woman and boy continue their descent, carefully climbing between rocks and jagged boulders. Up above, baboons leap past the entrance. Bats hang in clusters from the roof of the cave. Nearby, trees dot the grassy plateau. Anthropocene Museum, Exhibit 1, Allegory in the Nave. In the cave, the middle-aged woman, the boy, and the young woman leisurely approach a covered backdrop made of bamboo poles and leafy branches. They sit in a line, each on their own rock. Beatrice Wanjiku. This place was inhabited by early mankind. It was also a place of hiding for Morans, and our freedom fighters, Mau Mau, used to hide here during the struggle for independence. During the Mau Mau uprising, 1952 to 1960, I was a young child. I used to take food to my father. I used to meet police. There were white police officers and black police officers, the home guard. When they would ask me where I was coming from and where I was going, I would tell them, nowhere. Where are you coming from? Nowhere. The experience of being in a place like this, where it's literally another world, it's undiscovered, it still goes deeper. So my fascination is more to do with a force of nature that exists as a cave, as an unknown, and things that live here that we probably do not equate them to living things. And ultimately, together, it uh, creates this ecosystem that allows for other things to thrive, that benefit other living things that we probably don't give a care for because humans are at the top of the table. Humans definitely are destroying the earth for their own things that they think are much better. There is a variety of animals that have made this cave their home. We have the baboon parliament that gather here. Around now is when they'd be reporting in to sleep. We also have the largest population of this variety of bats living here that scientists claim is unique to Kenya. When we leave this cave, there is another cave that's 50 meters from here that spiritual people use for prayers. 
They come and stay for a few days, and when they leave, they feel like they've talked to God and received a breakthrough in their prayers. In my opinion, I see this environment of the cave as something that has helped us, but there is a threat of development. When you look here, there is a potential for geothermal energy extraction. The government has begun to take an interest to come here and start digging and begin extracting energy from Mount Saswa. We don't know whether these animals will continue to live here. We have an experience in Olkaria, Navasha, in Hell's Gate National Park. There were animals that used to live there, like the Varose eagle owl. Their habitats have been destroyed. I am also not for speaking for animals, so I could never kick out animals so that humans can live better. I'm all for having the baboons stay here, the bats, everything that um, seems to cause destruction, because it's not really the animals, it's the humans who need to maybe think of other ways where they can live together with these animals. The people have cut the trees, and when they cut the trees, they don't think about the welfare of future generations. You see, they should think about the community, because God has created them, and He has created them like all other people, equal. Anthropocene Museum Exhibit 2, Artifact of Stream and Struggle. Sirma Capiani, Herdsboy and Soswa resident. The church is the ship to take us through the ocean of this life. The church is the ship to take us through the ocean of this life. The church is the ship to take us through the ocean of this life. A golden hollow object resembling a miniature cave network is displayed on a shifting bed of smoke. The church is the ship to take us through the ocean of this life. Father, I hope you walk with me forever. Father, I hope you walk with me forever. Father, I hope you walk with me forever. The Anthropocene Museum, presented by Cave Bureau for Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum, 2019 Design Triennial Nature, directed by Denzu Mosetti.